The California BDR is one of the more difficult backcountry discovery routes. The reason being, you guessed it, sand. Oh, that's just fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> they did that just for the camera, guys. We began our journey in Yuma, Arizona, just north of the Mexico border and south of the state of California. What happened here, Tom? He's not going to talk. <laughs> Tom's handlebars came off. That's why he fell in the sand. I was falling ass. I was going so fast, I ripped the handlebars off. <laughs> and yes, there's a lot of sand in this area. Day two. Day two, about to start it up. Not long after leaving camp on the second day, the Husky was spitting water out of the radiator. It appears as long as the Husky is in motion and not idling, the overflow isn't an issue. So we decided to venture on. Uh, doesn't that 890 have anti-lock brakes on the front? Got yeah, a drive back brake on this to go down it. But this is just even part probably right here. See at the bottom. About 35 or 40 miles per hour, and the sand is not so bad. Part of the route is close to Joshua Tree National Park. This was one of my favorite sections of the trip. The Joshua Tree Forest was amazing to ride through. Yes, and even I dropped my bike. After a long stretch of exhausting sand, and the pavement in sight, we came upon a freight train blocking our path. Now we had to muscle three bikes over the tracks. Y'all just think those two were hard. Okay. On three. Let's bounce it. One, two, Whoa! All right. You got it. You got it. Perfect. Here's Prim. We're somewhere. It probably says the campground. Right Hold the, the wall. Right there. All right. So we're. This is Black. Canyon Road anyway, so we take this up, hop on the trail, a couple of miles, pavement, and then up to here to the interstate. Before we left Camp Hole in the Wall, we did a short morning hike. The scenery was pretty fantastic. Hey Tom, can you show me what you used to clean your fork seal out? He made it out of this paper cup here. This is called a on the fly fork seal cleaner <laughs> by Tom Gomez. <laughs> we stopped for a tour of an old mine shaft near the Coliseum Gorge mine. The day was going great, minimal sand, and the Husky has not overheated again. Fingers crossed.
After a quick check of the weather, we decided to head for Civilization and get a hotel for the night. Wind speed predictions to gust to 50 miles per hour. Sand and wind, not a good mix. We were lucky to divert to town because now the Husky's battery is dead. We told Phil if he would just change the plastic to orange on his blue and white KTM, that would solve all of its problems. After installing a new battery in the Husky, it was destination Death Valley. The winds on the ride were hellacious, but we made it without a glitch. We decided we would spend a couple of nights in Death Valley in order to see some of the attractions, like Dante's View, Artisan's Drive, Artist's Palette, and Natural Bridge. Due to the limited range of the 690 and 501, we made plans at camp that evening to ride part of Section 5, Titus Canyon, as a loop so we could cut the distance down to mileage we could make on a tank of gas. Titus Canyon was another highlight of the trip. 27 miles long, with the last three miles one way. It's one you don't want to miss if you're in the area. Rugged mountains, colorful rock formations, a ghost town, petroglyphs, and a spectacular narrow canyon as the finale. Close to the end of the day, while riding Echo Canyon, the Husky started acting up again. We decided it was not wise to head on, as it becomes more and more remote the farther north you go. Time to call this one a wrap and pave it back to Yuma. The Husky made it 425 of the 430 miles back to the truck, and then it decided it was done. I towed Phil and his blue and white KTM the last five miles. Although we were cut short by a few days, it was an epic journey. Yeah, that was just, it was no start. It is a dead puppy. Wow, man, it's a good thing we turned around. Yes. We came back here.